Good day and God bless. Welcome to our time of devotion and prayer. Let us pray. Lord, open unto us your word and send your Holy Spirit that we will be gathered from wherever we are to wherever we need to be. And that in this moment, by these means, we will have fellowship which transcends walls and space and even time. Lord, we thank you for each person that is gathering with us. Lord, some, some will gather on this day. Some will gather a week, a month, a year from now. And yet the fellowship is the same. It transcends. And Lord, we're thankful for the awakening to this reality of being the church. That, Lord, even as we gathered in places of fellowship throughout our lives, as our ancestors gathered, so we were all still gathered together before you. Lord, as profound as this is, the simple truth underlying it all is your love, which has created all of creation, all that is, all that was, all that will ever be, and yet you call it to a completion, and we await that completion in a time that you have set that is before us, but not before you. You know it as if it's, and for it's happened before you already. Lord, <clears throat> when ideas like this challenge our ability to understand them, Lord, help us to understand especially that this is simplicity to you. And that you call us to an even more straightforward thing. That no matter where, no matter when, no matter who, we must love one another. Lord, help us to love those we are in disagreement with. Lord, help us to love those who hate us, who spitefully use us. Lord, help us not just to love and care for those who are like us, who who fit our image of what our friends and our fellowship should be. Teach us to be more than a church that gathers a, around it like-minded people. But help us to be the church that is gathered in your spirit of those who agree and also disagree, who will challenge us and who will support us. Lord, help us to be the church that seeks to become more faithful and not one that believes it is already faithful enough. In all of this, Lord, teach us to be good teachers to those who come after us, those whose faith is young, especially our children. Lord, teach us to not make faith so simplistic and so safe that they don't really encounter what it is to believe. At the same time, Lord, help us to understand to whom we're speaking and to remember our own childhood with them. Teach us all how to play and to rejoice in life, to celebrate this beautiful creation, especially in the way we care for it. Lord, let us be mindful of what resources we have and why. That is not to hoard unto ourselves, but to gather in that which will serve you and help us to fulfill the tasks of caring. Lord, in all ways, help us to bring healing and peace to the world around us, especially as we are surrounded by wars and plagues. Lord, let us have courage, wisdom, and strength to glorify you in the midst of life's troubles, but especially throughout all of our joys. Lord, this in Christ we pray. Amen. And the scripture today is from Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, reading at verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that which he, that he which hath began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And not a long reflection on this. This is one of those great straightforward passages. Our confidence is not that we're going to have to come up with some great new scheme, great new plan, some specially designed program in order to succeed in being the church. That the success of being the church is our faith in Jesus Christ. 
and that if we are seeking to work and following him and obeying what, what scripture presents to us, that the good work began in us might not be finished by us, and that's okay. For God has called all of us to work together, all of us through time and space as well. That it may be our children or our children's children or somebody else's children that finish what we've begun. And we can rejoice in that and be glad to hand things down. One of the struggles people of the church really have today is giving up the roles that they've had in the church, the positions they've kept that they worked hard for, or that they feel is a special honor. How do we give that up and hand that over? How do we encourage others to pick up these things, to 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 bring their own gifts and abilities to, to whatever they're doing, all the same way they were handed to us? Not by coercion, not by trickery, but by inspiration, by encouraging us to say, yes, I can and I will and I'd love to do this, even though I may find it difficult, even though I think I'm not capable of it. Because it's not what we get done, but what Christ gets done in us, with us, through us, in spite of us, to show God's love. God bless and keep you. Amen.